Chapter 6 After they were seated, Kaya smiled at Glenn. Our first real date. We need another selfie. He grinned at her. Yeah, we do. Or we could have the waiter take the picture. That works too. Too bad, we can't get a real photo shoot. If I won't have you for the rest of my life, I at least want pictures to dream on. He took her hand in his and brought it to his lips. If I felt like I could have you in my life without giving up who I am, I would do it in a heartbeat. I'm waiting until you're ready. You know that, don't you? I don't care if it's five years or twenty. When you meet the man you're meant to be with, for the rest of your life, you don't move on. She pulled her phone out of her purse and held it to one side, leaning toward the middle of the table. He hesitated for a moment before leaning in, his cheek coming to rest against hers. He reached out and tapped the screen to take the picture. After pulling away, he looked at her for a moment. Let's make a pact. Kaya's eyes widened and a grin covered her face. I love packs. Can we spit and rub dirt all over our hands to seal it? Glenn looked at her like she'd lost her mind for a moment. I'd rather not. She sighed, shrugging. It was just a thought. Let's not talk about you leaving again. Let's pretend we've got forever for the rest of the time you're here. Kaya contemplated for a moment, knowing it would hurt more to do that, but in the end, she nodded. That's a good pact. It would be better with spit, of course, because all packs are better with spit, but I guess we can seal it with a kiss. Glenn looked around, a bit embarrassed. Sure, they'd kissed a couple of times at the ranch, but he hadn't seen anyone around when they did. In front of all these people? We can wait till we get to the truck to kiss and seal the pact then. You haven't made many pacts, have you? My sister and I made them all the time when we were little. We made one to never even smile at little Bobby Stevens, who lived on the next street over. I found out he had a bet that he could kiss us both before the last day of third grade. So, I made Bridget make a pact, and we spit, smeared mud, and made it binding for all eternity. She kissed him anyway. But he still didn't win, because I refused. Glenn grinned at her while shaking his head. You are a mess, Kaya. He frowned for a moment. Do you realize I don't even know your last name? How can I be in love with someone whose last name I don't know? I realized today that I didn't know your last name while I was talking to Jacqueline. Wait, why were you talking to Jacqueline? She shrugged. I was curious about her house after we rode past it the other day, so I asked Liz about it. She sounded interesting, so I took her a book. She took a sip of her water. Does it bother you that I went to see her? No, of course not. She's just, strange. I knew that as soon as I saw the lineup of bunnies watching us out the window. Kaya grinned. I like her. I want to adopt her and keep her forever. Do you think she'd live in my pocket forever? He shook his head at her. What's your last name? Taylor. Kaya Cheyenne Taylor. I like that. I'm Glenn Marshall Johnson. Kaya badly wanted to test out the sound of her first name with his last, but there was a pact, and even though they hadn't yet sealed it with a kiss, a pact was a pact. She reached out for his hand and wound her fingers through his. What's good here? He looked down at his menu that he hadn't even opened. I have no idea. I haven't been here in years. I think of this place as a special occasion restaurant. She smiled, her green eyes lighting up with amusement. I'm glad our first date rates as a special occasion with you. You know it does. He wanted to say more, but he couldn't. Telling her she was the only woman he'd had such an instant and powerful attraction to wouldn't help matters at all. How could it? Instead, he read over the menu, trying to decide what he wanted. After they'd ordered, he stood, took her hand, and led her to the small dance floor. I've never been terribly fond of dancing, 
but I'll go for any excuse to hold you close. Kaya smiled, resting her cheek against his shoulder as they slow danced to a country band. She'd never cared about dancing much, but with Glenn, she was thrilled to sway to the music. He was right. Being in his arms was worth dancing. She'd give anything to be in his arms. After dinner, he took her back to the ranch, parking the truck in a lot right next to the lake. He pushed a button to roll both of the windows down, before reaching out to her, unbuckling her seatbelt, and pulling her along the long seat toward him. He wrapped an arm around her shoulders, not saying a word, as they listened to the crickets chirp. Kaya sighed, contentedly, resting her cheek against his shoulder. It's so peaceful here. He rested his cheek atop her head, stroking her shoulder. I'm glad you love it as much as I do. I'm not a fan of the Texas heat. It feels like early spring here to me. She turned a bit more toward him. And you haven't sealed our pact with a kiss yet. I think that's one of the most important parts of the pact. Sealing it in a way that it can never be broken. And she wanted him to kiss her. If he didn't do it soon, she'd tell him to kiss her, and then she'd come across as bossy. The man needed to get on the ball and do it. You're not going to talk me into spitting for our pact, Kaya. She sighed. Fine. I do think it would be more binding, though. Glenn shook his head before leaning down and gently brushing her lips with his. There. Now our pact has been sealed. I have to admit, that was a lot nicer than spitting. She put her head back on his shoulder, content to just be with him. Tell me what your career goals are, he said softly. He wanted to know everything he could about her before she went home. You know, I don't even have an answer to that. For so long, my goal was to be able to support myself and not have to work in a bookstore to subsidize my income. Of course, I loved being around all those books, but I wanted to be able to devote all my time to writing. With the royalty check I got at the end of April, I hit that goal. I haven't really thought of a new one, but I should. I want to constantly be moving forward, not going back. I feel the same. My whole life has been very goal-oriented. My ultimate goal being the ranch becoming a working equine therapy center. Do you have a lot of work that needs to be done on the ranch to get it ready? Some. I've been working on making changes since I moved there five years ago. My sister is planning on working for me when it's up and running. She doesn't have the credentials to work with the clients yet, but she will in May. She'll work as a secretary until then. Sounds like you've got it all worked out. I hope you two work together well, Kaya said sincerely. I think we will. There's never been a whole lot of sibling rivalry between us. Glenn looked at the clock and saw that it was only twenty minutes before her curfew. I should drive you back to Barefoot Bungalow. Kaya sighed. What if I said I want to stay here with you all night long? He turned to her, cupping her face in his hands, his mouth descending to hers. I'd probably say I want to stay here too, but I don't think it's a good idea. He hugged her close to him, spending just a minute to sniff her hair, memorizing her scent, before pulling back. Let's go. Okay. She slid across the seat and buckled her seatbelt, taking one last look at the smooth lake in front of them. The spot he'd parked in had room for ten cars or so. It was surrounded by trees, and it felt as if they were the only people in the world there. She never wanted to leave the spot or his arms, but she couldn't tell him. They'd made a pact, and she wasn't about to break it. He put the truck into park in front of the cabin, getting out to walk her to the door. A quick brush of her lips with his at the door was all he'd allow himself. I'll pick you up just before six if that works for you. She nodded, smiling brightly. I'll be ready. Opening the door, she hurried inside and went straight to her room, not noticing her two friends who were already working in the living room. I'll be out in a few, she called, gathering clean pajamas, to wear. She went into the bathroom and ran a hot bath, sinking into the water. 
She soaked for a few minutes, letting the hot water soothe her frazzled nerves, the tears coursing down her face. She knew Glenn would change his mind about her staying, because he just had to. But what if he didn't? Asterisk. Kaya went to the cafe for a late lunch the following day, knowing it wouldn't be open on Sunday. As soon as she walked in, Kelsey hurried from behind the counter and flew at her yelling, booby bump. Kaya laughed, hugging the much smaller woman tightly. I want whatever Bob has on special today. I don't even care what it is. And a Sprite. Make it a double. Kelsey gave Kaya a concerned look as she hurried to the kitchen to put in the order, while Kaya took a seat at the counter. She rushed back to her friend. What's going on? Has Glenn been mean to you? Kaya shook her head emphatically. Glenn is the sweetest, kindest man I've ever had the good fortune to meet. Oh, good. I was worried I was going to have to walk down to the stables with a step stool so I could box the man's ears. If you ever decide to do that, either make sure I'm there or get video. I don't want to see him hurt, but I would love to see the look on his face when you have to climb on a step stool to scold him. Kelsey giggled. Shane would not approve. Her glance darted past Kaya to one of the booths. He says I'm not allowed to climb on anything until after little Sean is born. Kaya ignored the fact that Kelsey had switched the gender of her baby as she spun around to see who Kelsey was looking at, spotting a man with paperwork spread all over the table in front of him. Who's that? That's my very own Sheriff Shane. Kelsey raised her voice a little. Shane, come and meet my new friend, Kaya. The sheriff slid out of the booth and walked over to Kaya, holding his hand out to shake hers. Nice to meet you, Kaya. How long are you here for? We leave a week from Monday. Where are you from? I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. I'm one of Liz's writer friends. Well, I'm glad you came here and got to know Kelsey. My wife is a very good judge of character and if she likes you, you've got to be somebody pretty special. Kaya smiled. Same could go for you, I think. I'm going to head back over and do my paperwork. Real glad I got to meet you. Kelsey has said some nice things about you. They were the only people in the cafe. Kaya knew they closed at two, so she'd come not long before. Order up. Bob called from the kitchen. Kelsey hurried away, grabbed the steaming bowl that was on the counter and a handful of crackers, and placed them in front of Kaya. If that's not spicy enough, you let me know. Bob is kind of chintzy with the spices. I have my own supply though, and I'm happy to share. Kaya looked down at the bowl in front of her. Jambalaya? Exactly. And Bob seasons it for baby. Taking a big bite of the food, Kaya felt the flavors exploding on her tongue. It's good. Maybe a little under-seasoned. Kelsey grinned. Kaya agrees it's not spicy enough, Bob. I need the green stuff. Bob stuck his head out of the kitchen to glare at Kaya. He personally brought her a can of seasoning. You really must be somebody special. This one never shares. With that he walked back into the kitchen. Kaya opened the can and shook a liberal amount of the spice onto her food. I hope I didn't hurt his feelings by thinking it needed more spice. Nah, Bob is just cranky. He thinks everything he makes is just perfect the way it is. Well, it's really good. It's just not perfect. With the extra seasoning it is. Kaya raised her voice so Bob could hear her. It's great, Bob. I always have extra seasoning. She looked at Kelsey. I keep a little can just like this in my purse. Same stuff. You can never get too much seasoning. Kelsey leaned forward on the counter. And this is why I like you. Asterisk. Glenn was running late that afternoon, so he had to pick up Kaya without changing first. He knocked on the door this time ready for one of her friends to ambush him. Instead, Kaya herself came to the door. 
She was wearing a pair of shorts and a t-shirt that proclaimed, Be nice to me, or I'll kill you in a novel. He grinned. I love your shirt. Kaya laughed. My mom got it for me. Do you really kill people that you don't like in your novels? He escorted her toward the truck as he asked, happy he didn't have to deal with May again. No, I've never done that. May does that all the time though. After she buckled her seatbelt, she turned to him. How long will it take to get to your ranch? Ten minutes. We could actually walk there just as fast by taking the ranch paths. I'd just rather not have to cross the highway after dark to walk you home tonight. That makes sense. What are you going to feed me? I thought I'd make it fun. I have a couple of pizza kits, and I'm going to mix up the dough, and then we can each create our own pizza. Sounds good to me. Kaya had always enjoyed homemade pizza. It actually sounded delicious. His house wasn't nearly as big as the main house on River's End Ranch, but it was more than big enough for an average-sized family. It wasn't in perfect shape, but a coat of paint would have it looking much nicer. Do you want a tour? He asked as he got out of the truck. Yeah. If you don't mind that is. He shook his head. Now or after dinner? Now. If you don't mind. Not a bit. I was planning to change before I picked you up, but today's trail ride got back to the ranch later than expected. Give me five minutes to change, and we'll tour. Kaya looked at him. You know I don't care if you're wearing clean clothes or not. Let's just walk. He shrugged. I guess we can. He caught her hand and walked toward the stable. Stables this way. I have it ready for twenty horses. I only have a couple now, but I've got plans to buy more and start training them as soon as I graduate. He opened the door to the barn, and she walked through the stable, noting the nice big stalls. Will Muffin and Molly work with the children? Yes. I've been training them already. He led her to a small arena on the other side of the stable, that was entirely indoors. This is for the winter months. It's not built to keep the cold at bay, but it will keep the snow and wind out. I wondered how you'd handle the winter months. Glenn looked around, seeing everything with fresh eyes, because she was beside him. Over there is the office. I'll work out of there when a child needs to talk about something one-on-one, -on -one, but the main focus of the center will be the horses and the magic they can work with special kids. As Kaya watched him talk about the plans he had in place, she understood him a little better. This dream of his obviously meant everything to him. You're going to be wonderful with the kids. He smiled. I hope so. I've done a lot of training to get ready for this. She stepped closer to him, drawing his head down for a kiss. I know you will. All the love and work you've put into this place really shows. He led her outside to the area he'd set up for beginners. The children will start out here, and they'll gradually advance to actual trail rides. I've got a path down by the river we'll take. I think being out in nature will help when it's feasible. We'll be outside unless it's raining or there's snow on the ground. It'll mean bundling up a good part of the year, but a little cold weather never hurt anyone. He pulled her toward the house. Now I really am going to change my clothes. Do you want to wait in the living room or do you want to start making the dough for the pizzas so we can eat a little faster? She smiled. I'll make the dough. I love the idea of cooking with you. Everything they did together gave her a few more memories she would be able to pull out and play with over the years. The memories that would keep her going. He may not believe it, but she was going to wait as long as necessary. How could she settle for second best after holding true love in her hands? He gave her the mixes he'd purchased. Just dig for anything you need. I have nothing to hide. I'll be back in about ten minutes. I'm going to take a quick shower. Kaya watched Glenn walk away, her eyes on his cute little bum once again. She didn't know what it was about him, 
but she knew no other man would ever be able to measure up. He made her heart sing. Finally, she turned and dug through his cabinets for a mixing bowl. She didn't want to have to explain that she was daydreaming about him instead of mixing the dough like she'd promised. Once the dough was ready, she pulled out her phone and took a couple of pictures of his house. Maybe she was crazy, but she wanted to be able to picture him here during the long years of loneliness ahead of her. Chapter 7 When Glenn came out of the bathroom, he was wearing a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. His hair was damp, and he looked as if he'd just shaved. Kaya had already mixed the dough and preheated the oven. Dough needs to rise for five more minutes before we can create our pizzas. Glenn walked into the kitchen and put his hands at her waist, drawing her close to him. Thanks for taking care of that. She nodded. Thanks for bathing. He let out a bark of laughter, leaning down and hugging her close. Are you trying to say that it was necessary? I would never say that to you. Never ever. She planted a loud kiss on his cheek. You know I think you're the bee's knees. The bee's knees? Why not the bee's elbows? Kaya sighed, shaking her head. Bees don't have elbows. Silly man. The timer on the stove went off. We need to make pizza. I greased two pans. I'm going to make the best pizza. He shrugged. I'll let you make both if you want. Not on your life. I'm making memories with you, Glenn, and no one's going to stop me. Mere minutes later, they were up to their elbows in pizza dough. They each had their own pan they were working with, and Kaya was carefully spreading sauce with a spoon over hers. I've got lots of toppings to choose from. Glenn went to the fridge and pulled out a bag of ground beef, already browned, a bag of diced onions, and another of diced peppers. Pepperoni joined the other ingredients and then a huge bag of shredded mozzarella cheese. Do we get points for being creative? she asked. Or is it just about taste? This isn't a contest, Kaya. Well, I don't know why not. Are you afraid you'll lose? Glenn just shook his head. He didn't know what it was about her, but Kaya always seemed to bring a little more zest to his life. And who could complain about that? When she'd finished her masterpiece, she turned it to him so he could see. In pepperoni, she'd made a heart, using ham, beef, and green peppers to spell out, I love you, Glenn. He grinned when he saw it. Can I take a picture of it? I want to remember my first ever pizza, oh love. Absolutely. Want me to hold it up so you can have a picture of me with it? Yes, please. Okay, and then you have to do the same. I'll set up a drop box that we can both share pictures into when I get home. As soon as she said the words, she wondered if they'd upset him, if he'd consider them breaking the pact, but he said nothing, just rushing off to get his phone. After the pictures were taken, they shoved the pizzas into the oven and sat together on the couch, him with his arm around her and her snuggled closely into his side. Are you going to use any of your house for the business? she asked, looking around. It really was a nice home. She could see that there were a few things that needed repair, and a fresh coat of paint, but it would be a place she would enjoy living if they ever got to that point. He nodded. I'll probably have an office in the house. I know that Donna will work out of here at first. I've converted one of the bedrooms into an office, and I'll keep records in there. That's cool. Do you have an office in your apartment? He asked. She laughed, shaking her head. I'm honestly still living in the same apartment I was in during my senior year of college. It's just an efficiency. I have a couple of recliners and a computer desk, which overlooks the pool. I bounce back and forth between working in a recliner with my laptop and working on my desktop. Are you planning to move to something bigger? She shrugged. I've thought about it, but right now, it's plenty for my needs. Maybe eventually. I lived at home with my parents until my uncle left me this place, so I have nothing to say to that. 
I've been here for about three years now. Donna's ready to escape. Kaya grinned. I couldn't stay at home for long. Bridget made me crazy. Even when I first moved into the dorm, I thought I'd go home every weekend. Instead, I ended up staying on campus except for holidays, because Bridget got on my last nerve. Mom can't stand it when we fight, and she always takes Bridget's side. He frowned at that. Why does she always take Bridget's side? Because Bridget can scream louder than any human being that has ever walked the face of the earth. So, Mom got into the habit of giving in to her every single tantrum. I don't think she even realizes she does it now. He shook his head. I promise to always be on your side against Bridget the Midget. You truly are superhero material, Glenn Johnson. I do believe I'll keep you around forever and ever. You are a bright woman to make this decision. It's one I approve of. He leaned down, as if to kiss her, but instead his lips landed on the tip of her upturned nose. Have I mentioned yet how cute I think your nose is? Have I mentioned yet that you're a bit odd, but completely lovable? He laughed. You're the only one who has ever thought I was odd. For everyone else, I'm Mr. Dependable. Good old Glenn. Can't work today? Call Glenn. Need help with a research paper? Call Glenn. I'm as boring as can be, and you think I'm odd? I think that's one of my favorite things about you. She laughed. You're a silly willy. He shook his head. No one else thinks I'm silly either. Maybe you just bring out the best in me. He lowered his head and took her lips with his, his arms going around her to bring her closer. Kaya wrapped her arms around his neck, holding on for dear life. More memories to keep her going. Two hours later, they'd consumed their pizza and cleaned up the kitchen together. Glenn smiled at the pretty girl beside him for a moment. Do you have a curfew tonight? Kaya laughed. It did kind of feel like May was giving me a curfew last night, didn't it? She shook her head. I can stay out as late as I want tonight. What are you thinking? I think I'd enjoy a walk. I want to take you down by my stretch of the river. Sounds good to me. Do you have a sidewalk too? He shook his head. Nope, just a walking path. I sometimes ride the horses there as well. I'll walk you along the path that my more advanced riders will be able to take during therapy. Sounds good to me. Kaya reached out for his hand, winding her fingers through his. I'd watch trash burn with you. Glenn couldn't respond to that. It was going to be so hard to let her go. Let's get water and go. Kaya frowned. Does that mean I have to let go of your hand? He raised an eyebrow at her. It would be easier if you did, but I guess you can open the fridge, and I can get two bottles of water out. Okay. She walked to the fridge and opened it with her free hand, and he took both bottles of water out. Now how will we open them? That takes two hands. I'll hold and you open. This is silly. Kaya shrugged. I'm not letting go. The words were true on so many levels, but she wasn't about to tell him that. He thought she meant for now, and it was probably best if he kept thinking that. After both waters were opened, they walked out to the path overlooking the river. The river is along the west boundary of my property for a full mile. Do you want to walk that far? Kaya shrugged. I wore walking shoes, not sure what we'd do. I can handle walking for just as long as you want. All right. The path wasn't built up the way it was on River's End, but his ranch was meant for an entirely different purpose than the big destination ranch. They walked along the dirt path for a while, with Kaya watching the river as they went. It's so beautiful here. So peaceful. If I lived here, I wouldn't ever want to leave the ranch. Not even to go into town for a little grocery shopping. I don't either. I could really just stay here forever. But I do like to eat. 
Eating is so overrated when you can stare at the water. I would be able to get so much writing done if I lived in a place like this. There's just something about water that makes my creative juices flow. I walk 20 feet and have ideas for six new series. Not that I need to be writing six series at once. Trust me, no one needs to be writing that many series. It will slowly fry your brain if you even try. So what will you do with all those ideas? Slowly lose my mind, she joked. I don't know. I might start one more series. I have two going right now. I think May has eight, but she lost her mind a long time ago. How did you meet May? You both live in Texas, right? Yeah. I saw people online talking about how sprint writing really helps them stay on task, so I did a Google search for sprint writing. I found this chat room, so I started going there. I met May and Liz both there. May and I live about an hour and a half apart, so we started meeting up for lunch every couple of months. I have to really hound her to get her to agree, but I eventually wear her down. He laughed. And you just met Liz in person for the first time this week, right? Yeah, and she's just what I expected her to be. It amazes me how well you can really get to know someone online. My mom is always telling me it's not safe to meet internet people, and I agree that it's not always safe, but sometimes it's okay. Be careful, okay? I can't imagine what a world without you in it would be like. As he said the words, he wanted to scream. He didn't want to give her false hope that there would be a future together, but he also needed to let her know the very depth of their feelings. And he couldn't explain, because they'd made a pact. Maybe there hadn't been spit involved, but he still wasn't going to break it. Kaya smiled at his words, so bittersweet, to her ears. She stopped walking, her fingers still laced with his. When he stopped and turned to her, she crooked a finger at him, beckoning him to her. He stepped closer and leaned down, his lips pressing against hers. She wrapped both arms around him, her hands stroking his back. I can't believe I can love someone so much after only knowing him for five days. It's like my heart knew yours the second I set eyes on you. He cupped her face with one hand, staring down into her eyes. It'll all work out how it's supposed to in the end. His arm went around her shoulders as he started walking again, feeling that things between them were getting too intense. Besides, he wanted her to see what was at the end of the path. Kaya could see a small patch full of color in front of them, far off in the distance. She didn't ask what was there, because she wasn't certain she had the ability to speak without crying at that moment. Every minute with him was beautiful, wonderful, and painful all at once. He watched her face as the small garden came into view, knowing she'd love it. When they were close, and she could see what it really was, her lips curved into a small smile. Oh, Glenn, it's beautiful. There was a field, filled with wildflowers, and just at the very end of the path was a bench. Can we sit for a moment and just drink it all in? He smiled at her wording. Who said things like they wanted to drink things in? I'd love to. When the garden had been planted, he'd imagined his more advanced students riding up to it and getting excited, but she was the first person he'd really shown it to. His life was very solitary, for the most part, except for his time on the Weston's ranch. Things he did for his future clients were never shown to anyone, because he was making it all happen on his own. Once they were sitting, she turned to him, her eyes filled with tears. This place is truly glorious. Thank you for sharing it with me. You're the first person I brought here, he admitted, his voice soft. I never really talk about the business I'm going to start, except with Donna. I have to talk to her about it. I'm glad it was me you chose to bring here. She sighed, looking everywhere. Will you bring children here? He nodded. This will be the place advanced ones get to ride to. I thought it would be a good reward for a job well done. Is there anything you don't think of? You really are going to be amazing at what you do. I can see your passion for it all the time. 
I'm glad you're going to get to work with children, because I can see it's your first love. I've worked my whole life for it. I didn't know I'd have this ranch and be focusing on equine therapy, but I always knew I'd work with autistic kids in some way. This just kind of cemented it for me. She opened her bottle, taking a deep swallow of water. This is what I miss by living in the city. There's a park I go to sometimes when I need to think. It's only a 10-minute drive from my apartment and has these great walking trails. I'll walk for hours, and when I get home, my brain is ready to work again. Well, after I sleep for a few hours of course. You don't walk alone, do you? She shrugged. I take pepper spray, but yeah, I walk alone. There's no one I care to be with when I'm in the mood to walk. I want my brain to be able to flow freely, so ideas can pop to the surface when they're ready. Don't you have a neighbor who can walk with you? Most of my neighbors are college students. I guess I haven't really taken the time to get to know them. It doesn't work that way in the city. He sighed heavily. I don't like the idea of you walking alone. You could get hurt. I could. I'm careful, though, and I usually walk early in the morning when the paths are full. Right before I go to bed. I don't like it, but I guess I don't have the right to say a whole lot, do I? She shook her head, not mentioning that he was sending her home in a little more than a week. Guess not. He wrapped his arm around her and brought her closer to him, just holding her. It was a beautiful evening, and there was a gentle breeze. Being with her made him feel like he could conquer the entire world. He hated to think about how he'd feel after she was gone. Asterisk. Kaya did something that night she'd never done before. She wrote a heart-wrenching scene that left her sobbing. She could feel her heroine's ache as she said goodbye to the man she loved and headed off to spend the rest of her life alone. When she couldn't stop crying, Liz took her computer from her, while May sat beside her on the couch, putting her arm around Kaya. It's all going to be okay, Kaya. Once you're back in Texas, you'll meet a man who's good for you. One who won't tear you in two this way. I don't want anyone else. If you got to spend a week with Bob, your Bob, do you think any other man would ever be good enough for as long as you lived? May sighed heavily. I know they wouldn't. For me, it seems to be Bob or no one. Then you should understand how I feel. Glenn is my Bob. He's the only man I've ever felt this way about. I saw him, and I knew he was the only man in the world I would ever love. It was instantaneous. Liz sat down on the arm of the couch on Kaya's other side. I know how heartbroken I was when Jack left. You need to take advantage of the time you have together. Kaya swiped at a tear with the back of her hand, sniffling loudly. I'm trying my hardest. I'm taking lots of pictures, and I'm being really upbeat. We made a pact not to talk about me leaving, and it's really hard. Liz and May exchanged looks. How can we help you? May asked. You know we're here to do anything you need. After another loud sniff, Kaya smiled. You could finish my book for me? And she's back. Liz announced. No more sympathy from us. Kaya couldn't help but giggle as both of her friends went back to their computers. You can't blame a girl for trying. May shook her head at Kaya. Yes, we can. Get to work. Kaya sighed. I think I'm going to take a nice, long hot bath before I write more. I need to settle my mind. And cry some more. After setting her computer on the floor, Kaya shook her head to clear it for a moment. I just want to thank both of you. You're the best imaginary friends a girl could want. We feel the same way about you, Kaya. I'm glad you talked me into this trip, May said softly. Me too. It wouldn't have been the same without you. Who else would have been able to make Glenn feel like he was in trouble? May chuckled. I made Glenn feel like he was in trouble? Well, he thought you'd given me a curfew. 
He asked me last night if I had a curfew to work around. A curfew? Liz laughed out loud. What exactly did you say to him, May? I just told him she needed to work and asked what time he'd have her home by. Is that so wrong? I don't know if Glenn would back down from anyone else. He's huge, and he's always seemed so strong. Liz shook her head. You're funny, May. Kaya got to her feet. I'll be back in a few. I'm going to read in the tub and recharge my batteries. You know, all the cabins here should have hot tubs on the back porches. I can't imagine why they don't. Liz shrugged. I'll make sure the Westons know that's what you think. They always appreciate feedback. The more water the better is my feedback. We should go swimming soon. We could go to the pool. Or the lake. Most people swim in the pool, though. Do you want to swim tomorrow? Are you seeing Glenn? I'm seeing him after work. We're taking a canoe down to the lake or something like that. He knows how much I love water, so he's doing his best to make water happen for me. He'll be here at six. I need to pack a picnic lunch. Do you want to take me into town to get lunch stuff? Liz nodded. Yeah, I can do that. I'll even take pictures of the two of you together when he comes to pick you up, if you want. Kaya smiled. That would be wonderful. We were saying just tonight we need as many pictures as possible. I will never forget him. Each moment is a new special memory. She walked away then, going to take her bath. And cry. She was sure she'd cry more. For her heroine and for her. Why did the imaginary people in her stories keep making her cry? Chapter 8 Glenn was there to get Kaya right on time Sunday evening. Kaya stopped in the kitchen to get their picnic while Liz went to the door. Hey, Glenn. Hi, Liz. How's married life? You like living in California? Married life is fabulous because I'm married to Jack. California is great because that's where Jack lives. Glenn laughed. I'm sensing a theme here. Liz nodded. As long as you're with the one you love, your life is special, and it doesn't matter where you are. Kaya heard what Liz was saying as she walked up behind her, and it took all her strength not to kick her friend. I'm ready. I have our dinner. She held up a cooler to show him. Let's go then. Glenn gave her one of the smiles that never failed to make her knees weak, before raising a hand to wave goodbye to Liz. Good seeing you. As they walked away, he wondered about Liz's words. Were they meant to tell him something, or were they really just a celebration of the love she had with Jack? He wasn't sure if he'd ever know. Kaya walked out, looking at the truck. Are we walking or driving? Glenn shrugged. Let's walk but you have to let me carry the lunch. That thing looks heavy. Kaya happily handed it over. It is heavy, but it's not too bad. She ran her hand down his arm, letting her fingers tangle with his. I missed you today. I missed you too. It scares me sometimes when I realize how completely you've taken over my thoughts. He glanced at her face as he said it, wondering how she'd react. I understand that. If it helps at all, I'm a little scared too. Kaya kept her eyes in front of them, not wanting him to see just how messed up she was by the whole situation. I guess if we're in it together, that helps a little. They got to the dock, and he looked out. When I went to rent a canoe, they were all out. How would you feel about the rowboat? She grinned. Rowboats are so much more romantic. Glenn raised an eyebrow at that. Really? They both float, and you use oars. How is one more romantic than the other? Kaya shrugged. I have no idea why it's true. I only know it is true. He shrugged, putting the cooler in the middle and taking her hand to help her into the boat. Once they were in the middle of the lake, she reached for the cooler and gave him his sandwich, taking her own. 
There are chips in there as well, and I made brownies for dessert. You made brownies? Really? I can cook, you know. I don't do it super often, but I'm actually pretty good at it. Why don't you do it more then? Well, it seems pointless to cook just for me. When I do cook, I make enough for three days, so I won't have to go out and fetch food for myself. I look forward to your brownie then. I appreciate you taking the time to feed me. Kaya smiled. I'd do anything for you. You haven't figured that out yet? He smiled, kicking at her foot with his. There was no other way to respond with his hands and mouth full. She wrinkled her nose at him, satisfied, he'd understood. It was hard being with him, but it would be so much harder being away. Asterisk. On his way to lunch on Monday, Glenn bumped into Liz. I'm surprised you're awake, he said. Oh, I'm not a night owl like those two. I mean, I like to stay up late sometimes, but those two are like vampires. They only sleep during daylight hours. So strange. Glenn laughed. I did notice that. They got to the cafe, and he opened the door and held it for her. Are you meeting Joni for lunch? He asked as she walked in past him. Liz nodded. I am. She stopped walking and stepped back outside. Can I say something? He was immediately nervous about what she was going to say. Yeah? Kaya's got it for you bad. Her heart is going to be broken in a million pieces when she has to go back to Texas without you. Please, Glenn, think about what you're doing, and if that's what you really want. Kaya and I made a deal about how we're going forward. She decided to have this two-week fling with me with her eyes wide open. Her eyes have been clouded by love since the first moment she saw you. Keep that in mind. Liz didn't say anything else, and didn't wait for him to hold the door again. She walked into the café and left him standing there staring off into space. He didn't want to hurt Kaya, but he couldn't change his whole life goal for a woman. He couldn't. When he got into the café a minute later, Liz was in a booth with Joni, and they were already laughing. Glenn went to the counter and sat on a stool. Kelsey walked up to him, snapping her fingers in front of his face. You eating here, or want me to pack something to go? Here. I'll get you a Coke. Think about what you want. Menus in front of you. Kelsey hurried off to get his drink and pushed it in front of him. What's wrong with you today? Glenn shrugged. Nothing. I just have some serious thinking to do. Kai is pretty special, isn't she? Glenn made a face. This ranch is like the worst of all small towns. I can't even think something without everyone knowing my business. It's not like you two have been hiding your feelings for each other. You're seen together every single day. And you both walk around with stars in your eyes, unable to focus on anything. He groaned. That sounds like we have some kind of horrible disease or something. He pushed the menu at her. Just get me the special. You don't want to know what it is first? He shook his head. At the moment, I couldn't care less. Kelsey patted his hand before walking off toward the kitchen. I need a special. A few minutes later, Kelsey was back, sliding a plate with a strange pocket type thing on it. What is it? He asked, poking at it with his fork. It's a sausage and cheese calzone. Today's special. Enjoy. Kelsey wandered away to take another order while Glenn took a bite of his meal. It was good, so he shrugged and took a drink of his Coke. When Kelsey came back by to check on him, he looked at her. What are you and the sheriff doing tonight? Kelsey frowned. I don't know. Why? Do you like to play cards? Cards? Are you okay, Glenn? I thought it might be fun for Kaya and me to play cards with another couple. Yes or no? Kelsey shrugged. I'd love to get to know Kaya better, so sure. Your place or ours? Mine. 
He wanted memories of her there. As many as he could get. Okay. I'll bring the chili I have in the crock pot. Kaya, and I will make grilled cheese. 6.30 okay? Yeah, sure. If I get hungry before that, I can snack. I manage a cafe, after all. Kelsey walked away, and Glenn felt a little better. He and Kaya should probably spend as little time alone together as possible to avoid future heartbreak. Every kiss made it harder for him to be away from her. Once Kaya was in his truck that evening, he told her the plans. We're going to my house. We're making grilled cheese sandwiches, and Kelsey and the sheriff will come over with a pot of chili. Sounds fine. Kaya hated the idea, but she wouldn't tell him that. She wanted him all to herself every single night. Why should she have to share him with Kelsey and the sheriff? Once at his house, he left her in the kitchen. Will you start on the sandwiches while I get my shower? He asked. Kaya nodded, watching him walk away. He hadn't even kissed her today. Was he already losing interest? She set the oven on warm and made six sandwiches, figuring each of the men would eat a couple, and she and Kelsey could each have one. That with the chili should be enough. Glenn was still back showering when there was a knock at the door, and feeling uncomfortable, Kaya opened it. Kelsey yelled out, booby bump, and the two women hugged, laughing. Shane shook his head. Did you have to teach her that? Kaya shrugged. It's fun. Do you realize she's now trying to make friends at the obstetrician's office, so she'll have people to belly bump within a few months? Kaya's eyes met, Kelsey's. You've chosen a worthy endeavor. I'm proud of you. Kelsey giggled, stepping into the house. Shane carried a crockpot over to the counter, to plug in. I figured it would just be easier to bring the whole thing. Then I can take it home and wash it when I'm done, Kelsey explained. What game are we playing? No idea. Kaya said. I didn't even know we were hanging out with you guys tonight until Glenn came and got me a little while ago. Did I hear my name? Glenn asked, walking into the room. He'd changed into a pair of shorts and a tight t-shirt, and Kaya was all but salivating as she looked at him. Kelsey was wondering what game you wanted to play, and I have no idea. I was thinking hearts. Everyone know how to play, he asked, walking over and put his hand on Kaya's shoulder. He needed to touch her. Kaya nodded, leaning a bit into his touch. I played in college. Spades was more popular, but we played some hearts too. We both play, Kelsey said. Shane's not very good, of course, but he knows how. He's not good? Kelsey, are you competitive by any chance? Kaya asked, one eyebrow raised in question. I'm so competitive. I have five siblings and a coosling. Of course I'm competitive. What on earth is a coosling? Kaya put her hands on her hips, as if challenging the smaller woman. A cousin who was raised as a sibling, of course. Aren't you a writer? You're supposed to get context clues. Kelsey rolled her eyes, heading toward the kitchen. I'm starving. Let's eat, so I can wipe the floor with Kaya. Kaya looked at Glenn with a gleam in her eye. She has no idea what she's in for, does she? Glenn swallowed hard. Sheriff? Please tell me you brought some form of crowd control. I have a handgun on me. Unless they get too out of control, we should be good. Kelsey glared at Shane. Don't make me spice this to my taste. She scooped out some chili and put it into a bowl. Shane shook his head. I think I'm going to have to get quiet now. Asterisk. Kaya and Glenn swam together the following morning. He couldn't quit staring at her in her one-piece suit, which she'd actually chosen for its modesty. His gaze made her blush. Would you stop gawking and put some sunscreen on me? She turned her back to him so he could apply it. She'd thought about asking one of the girls to do it before leaving the cabin, 
but she liked the idea of his hands on her in an acceptable way in public. When he finished, she took the bottle from him. Turn around, and I'll do your back. I'm not going to burn, Kaya. My skin is olive-toned, and I really don't burn easily. Kaya leaned forward until her lips were at his ear. Are you telling me you're going to refuse to let me rub my hands all over your back? You got to touch mine, and it's just not fair. Glenn gave her a look that made her heart beat faster before turning around. She carefully rubbed the sunscreen into his skin, enjoying the feel of his muscles under her fingers. When she finished, she put the cap back on and set the bottle down. He turned back to look at her, his expression unreadable. Are you a good swimmer? She shrugged. I'm not awful, but I wouldn't say I'm good. Race me? Kaya contemplated for a moment before nodding. They were alone at the pool except for the lifeguards. It was his day off, and she'd chosen to stay up and meet him early, rather than have her sleep interrupted again. They were at one end of the pool, and she said, go. He was still a few feet behind her, so she dove in quickly, knowing she was cheating, but who cared about cheating if it gave her the advantage she needed to win? She put everything into the swim, her breaststroke perfect form. She could feel him closing in on her, feel the ripples his body made beside hers. And just as she reached out to touch the wall, his hand was there first. She came out of the water, a grumpy look on her face. I can't believe you won. He laughed. Even with you cheating? If I hadn't cheated, would you have let me win? Kaya Cheyenne, you are something else, you know that? She shrugged. I have issues. I never denied it. I think that's what I love most about you. You don't deny your faults, and you accept them for what they are. His hand cupped her cheek. You brought a whole new dimension to my life, and I'll always be grateful for the time we have. Kaya said nothing as they found a beach ball and began batting it back and forth. She wasn't entirely certain how grateful she could be. They decided to have lunch together in the cafe before she went to sleep. She was yawning, but happy to have the time with him. She would get her sleep in a little while. He held the door as they went into the cafe. She had pulled on a pair of shorts and a t-shirt over her bathing suit. After her booby bump with Kelsey, they were led to a booth off to one side, and she noticed the sheriff in a booth as she walked past. Sorry you lost so badly last night, Sheriff. Shane laughed. Don't apologize to me. It's my wife who got upset when she lost. Kaya looked at Kelsey over her shoulder. Is that so? My husband has the biggest mouth in all of Idaho, Kelsey said, grinning as she gave them both menus. Bob's special today is a belt with this special spicy mayo he whips up himself. Really yummy. What's the E? Kaya asked, intrigued. She'd always enjoyed a good BLT. Egg. He says there's no point in cooking something that needs initials unless it spells a word, so he added the egg in. Kaya grinned. I'll take it. And I really need to meet Bob. He seems like he's a special kind of man. Oh, he's special all right. Kelsey rolled her eyes. He's been whipping up this great drink for me in the mornings, to help with my morning sickness. It's the nastiest thing you've ever tasted, but I'm throwing up a lot less. Glenn made a face. Do we have to talk about vomit as I'm about to order my lunch? Kelsey shrugged. It's my job to keep everyone informed about my pregnancy. Kaya smiled at her friend. I think you're a little bigger than you were when I got here. I definitely see a bigger tummy. Kelsey patted her belly happily. I can't wait for her to get here. Little Shania is going to set this ranch on its ear. When someone walked into the cafe a moment later, Kaya squinted. That girl looks just like you. Kelsey looked over her shoulder. Oh, yeah. That's my twin sister Danny. We were identical until I started to lighten my hair and she cut hers short. Who's that man with her? 
Kaya asked, staring unashamedly. She'd heard about Danny, but this was the first time she'd actually seen her out and about. Oh, just the local banker. He feeds Danny information about the changes our parents want before we hear it from them. It's kind of cheating, but mom and dad are not playing fair. Kelsey quickly jotted down Glenn's order, and then hurried off to get them both filled. Not playing fair? You know there are six Weston siblings that run the ranch together, right? Glenn asked. Kaya nodded. Yeah. I think everyone who stays here knows that. I've only really met Kelsey and Wyatt, but I've sure heard about the others. Well, they don't own the ranch yet. It's been in the family for generations, but their parents are kind of testing them. They're trying to see if they have what it takes to run this place. So they are on the road in their RV. Last I heard they were in Florida, visiting the giant rodent who lives there. Anyway, every few weeks they call and say something else has to be done. You've noticed all the construction going on around the ranch? At Kaya's nod, he continued. That's all the parents doing. They're making their kids crazy. And the banker is involved how? He's the one tipping off the kids. The demands seem to go to the bank first, but I'm not sure why. It's all very strange. Sounds like it. I think the ranch is wonderful, and whoever is running it is doing a marvelous job. I love it here. I have no complaints, Glenn said with a smile. Is there something going on between the banker and Danny? Kaya asked, her eyes trained on the other couple. He laughed. Absolutely not. Danny is so focused on search and rescue. I haven't heard of her dating anyone. Asterisk. On Wednesday, Kaya stayed up late again to join Glenn on his day off. They took four-wheelers up into the mountains, exploring the area early on Wednesday morning. It was the first time they'd really been alone since Sunday. They went to a different spot this time, and she got to see the ranch from a completely different angle. Why don't we go golfing? She asked, looking down at the beautiful grounds the family took care of so well. Do you golf? He asked, surprised. Well, no, but I didn't ride horseback till this trip either. Or hunt for Bigfoot. Or kiss tall, incredibly sexy cowboys. So many new things I've done since I've come to Idaho. He grinned at her. We can golf if you want to, but I personally don't enjoy it. She shrugged. No golfing then. How about kissing? It feels like it's been three months since you've kissed me. He smiled, shaking his head at her. Three months, huh? And we've known each other for what? Nine days now? She nodded. Sounds about right. So, you haven't kissed me since we met. You'd better rectify that soon. He walked to her, gripping her waist with his hands. I guess I can do that. She made a face, wrenching away from him. Don't let me force you. Get back here. Kaya walked back and stood in front of him, her hands on her hips. Because you like kissing me, right? He sighed. I could write my entire doctoral thesis on kissing you. It was something he now knew a great deal about, and he was definitely interested. She wrapped her arms around his neck. Sounds like a plan to me. When his lips came down on hers, they seemed different to her. Almost like he was holding back. She sighed, resting her head on his shoulder and just hugging him tightly. What was she going to do when he wasn't there to touch and hold every day? How's your book coming? He asked, trying to bring some normality back to the situation. Good. I should finish it tonight, and then comes the long process of edits. I'll have it ready to send to my editor by the time I leave on Monday, though. So, goal will be accomplished. That's all that matters, right? I guess so. Are you happy with the book? She nodded. It's more angsty than I usually write, but it kind of suits my mood. It took an odd turn, but I think my fans will be happy with something a little different from me. 
She didn't tell him that he was the reason it was different. She didn't need to. She could see that he understood by the look on his face. He smiled, stroking his hands over her back. Wow. I'm dating a girl who has fans. I feel like a rock star. She ignored that, knowing he was just being silly. Let's go look for Bigfoot. I promised, Kelsey. Glenn sighed. Looking for Bigfoot is my favorite thing to do with you. Really? Kaya asked. I'd rather just sit around kissing all day. Maybe someone needs to teach you about sarcasm. I think I have it down. She blew him a kiss as she started through the brush, looking for clues that pointed to the mythical beast. Chapter 9 That night, when Kaya sat down to write with her friends, May asked her how it was going with Glenn. Are you two still doing well? Kaya studied May for a minute and finally responded in the only way she could. I don't think I want to talk about Glenn. I think I'll be better off just working when I need to work, and seeing him when I see him. I don't need to talk about him the rest of the time too. She had no idea how defeated her voice sounded until she saw the look on Liz's face. May nodded, reaching out and squeezing Kaya's hand from her spot on the other side of the couch. I understand. I won't bring him up again, but if you need to talk, I'm here. Thanks. Liz and May exchanged looks, but Kaya pretended not to notice. Now, I need to get my couple to the point where they can declare their love. Think I can do it in less than 4,000 words? Asterisk. The rest of the week went by quickly. It felt as if Kaya had barely arrived, while at the same time, it felt as if she'd known Glenn forever. On her last day on the ranch, she went to see Jacqueline. She had to say goodbye. Why she felt so much kindship with the crazy bunny lady, she had no idea. Jacqueline wasn't outside when she arrived, so Kaya marched to the door and knocked, knowing the older woman rarely left her home. She could see a brown bunny poking its head under the curtain as if to see who was there. The door opened, and all Kaya could see was Jacqueline walking away. Well, come in. I'm getting our tea and cookies. Kaya walked in and picked up a bunny, so she could sit in the same chair she'd been in before. The bunny rubbed against her hand, so she kept him on her lap, stroking him. She was amazed at how soothing holding the bunny was. Fairies told me you'd be here, but I was busy with other things and didn't have it all ready like I should have. Jacqueline came back into the room, carrying a tea tray. Are you going to be all right? I have to be, don't I? I leave to go home in the morning. I'll leave my heart here in Idaho, scattered around in little pieces. Sure can tell you're a writer, Jacqueline commented, handing Kaya her glass of milk and a plate of cookies. You have to overdramatize everything. I'm surprised you didn't describe each little piece of your heart in gory detail. Kaya smiled. I'm not that kind of writer. I read your book. It was good. I could tell you'd never had a broken heart before though. That kind of thing shows in your writing. I think this is going to be good for you in the long run. You do? Kaya swiped at a tear trickling down her face with the back of her hand. I do. I know you can't see it now, but it's for the best. Jacqueline smiled sweetly. The fairies told me you're going to marry someone and be very happy. So, don't spend all your time pining for that man. Kaya couldn't imagine that she'd meet anyone else. How could she? I'll do my best. I want you to take something with you when you go. Something to remember me by. There's no way I could ever forget you. Jacqueline leaned over and held something out to Kaya, who took it automatically. She looked down and saw it was a kitchen towel with a fairy embroidered on one side. I make them sometimes, and the fairy said, you should get one. Jacqueline seemed almost embarrassed by her generosity. Kaya smiled, clutching it to her chest. I'll treasure it. Asterisk. That evening, the last one they'd spend together, Glenn took Kaya for a drive up into the mountains. 
I didn't plan a meal. I figured we could just get something after you see some of the views. I'd like that. Kaya said, her eyes memorizing his face. It was the last time she'd see him. She had pictures, but it wouldn't be the same. How could it? When he got to the lookout he'd had in mind, he grabbed a pair of binoculars from the glove compartment and got out of the truck. Come on. You're going to be amazed. Kaya followed him out of the truck, taking the binoculars and training them on the ranch. It seemed both vast and small at the same time, something that surprised her. They'd done so much on that piece of land, but here they were, on a mountain that was taller with a better vantage point, and she felt her heart ache. She loved the land. She loved the state, but more than anything, she loved Glenn. And she was never going to see him again. Where's your ranch? She finally asked, realizing she'd been quiet for way too long. She followed the direction he pointed with the binoculars, and she looked down at the house where she would imagine him for a long time to come. After handing the binoculars back to him, she dug her hands deep into her pockets, finding the piece of paper with her information on it. Her phone number and her email address. She'd be able to have hope, knowing he had a way to get in touch with her. He wrapped his arms around her, kissing her forehead. This has been the most amazing two weeks of my life. Thank you for bringing so much joy to me. Kaya rested her head against his shoulder, for once not wanting to kiss, because it would feel like saying goodbye. I hope you know it was mutual. I don't think I had any idea what it was really like to love someone until I met you. Thank you for that. My books will be richer, because I knew you. Something good would come out of the heartache and she had to concentrate on that. Are you hungry? He asked quietly. They had less than 24 hours left together, but he wanted to make the most of every one of them. Yeah, a little. Where do you want to eat? He shrugged, feeling a little lost. This was the first time he'd seen Kaya at a loss for words. She seemed almost despondent. He was used to her getting excited about every little thing and talking nonstop. His heart ached, knowing it was their upcoming separation that was doing this to her. We could go to my house and cook together? She shook her head. No, I don't think that's a good idea. I have to pack tonight. What time is your flight? He asked. Eleven. We'll leave for the airport at eight to make sure we're there on time. How are you going to get up at eight? He led her back to the truck, opening her door for her and making sure she was settled. Her sadness was almost scary. I'll probably stay up all night. We've been up all night riding together every night, but tonight, we're going to all pack and have a movie night. We need our bonding time together as much as we needed our riding time. She felt badly that she'd spent so much time hanging out with him and not her friends. She knew they understood, but she could have been a better friend to them. They'd be standing by her, and he would soon forget her. What time are you planning to start all that? He asked, hating the idea of cutting their time short for it, but understanding her need to be with her friends. They were why she'd come to Idaho, after all. Not till nine or ten. We have some time. The truth was she could stay out later but she wasn't sure if her heart could handle more time with him. She needed to cut her losses and head back to Texas. Okay. We'll go into Post Falls for Mexican. Will that work? She nodded. She wasn't a fan of Mexican food outside of Texas, but she could eat it for him. Sounds good. The drive to the restaurant was spent in silence. Kaya was drinking in the beautiful scenery she'd grown used to in Idaho and thinking about everything she'd miss. She felt like she was being sentenced to prison being sent back to Texas. How could you return to the mundane when you'd spent two weeks in paradise? She managed to make conversation over the meal, trying not to make him feel like an ogre. He'd done nothing wrong. He'd been honest and forthright from the very beginning. She just hadn't let his honesty stop her, 
and that was her mistake, not his. On their way back to the ranch, he said, I took tomorrow off work so that I can take you to the airport. I'm not ready to say goodbye tonight. Kaya felt a tear trickle down her cheek, and she turned her head away, looking out the window so he wouldn't see. I don't think that's a good idea. What do you mean? It's going to be hard enough to say goodbye to May and Liz at the airport. I will be an absolute mess if I have to say goodbye to you there as well. No, you go to work, and we'll say goodbye tonight. Her heart couldn't handle anything else. Glenn swallowed the lump in his throat at her words. So I won't see you again after I drop you off? No. I'm sorry. I wrote down my email address and my phone number, so you can call me when you're ready. He sighed. I don't want you waiting for me. I know you don't. That doesn't change the fact that I will. She squirmed in the seat as she reached into her front shorts pocket to pull out the paper, opening his glove box and putting it there for him. Now you won't lose it. He stopped then, in front of the cabin, unbuckling his seat belt. My life is going to feel so empty without you in it, he said hoarsely. She sniffled, doing her best not to cry in front of him. You'll have the children to work with. With as hard as you've worked to get where you are, you need to focus on what you have, not on what you'll be losing. He unfastened her seatbelt and pulled her across the seat to him. He didn't try to kiss her, but instead he wrapped his arms around her and held her tightly. I'm going to miss you so much. I'll miss you too. More words than that were simply beyond her as she clung to him. He'd become so much to her in such a short time. I love you, Glenn. She kissed his lips softly before extracting herself from his embrace. Think of me. She slid across the seat, opened the door, and walked calmly to the cabin. After she'd shut the door behind her, she realized her friends were both staring at her, and May had tears in her eyes. You know what I need more than anything else in the whole world? Kaya asked, tears streaming down her face. What? May asked, obviously willing to give her anything. A booby bump. May sighed. You know I hate it when you call hugs that. Kaya nodded. I do. But I need it right now. All right. Let's bump boobies. May hurried to her and hugged her tightly. What have you done to get ready for movie night? Kaya asked. I'm expecting popcorn and brownies and ice cream. Liz laughed. We've got it all. Let's get packed, and then we'll have the best movie night ever. Kaya smiled. How are you going to drive all day after staying up all night? I'm going to sleep at Joni's after I dump you two at the airport. Just so there's a plan. Asterisk. Glenn sat in the driveway, staring at the closed door for a long time after Kaya went in. The pain in his chest was almost unbearable. He put his hand on the handle of the door, sure he couldn't let her go. How could he face life without her? He sighed, putting his hand back on the steering wheel. He couldn't face himself in the mirror if he gave up all his plans and dreams for a woman. Any woman. Even if she was the only girl he'd ever met who completed him so perfectly. Kaya was something special, but he had to let her go. He had her number, and he prayed that when he was ready to ask, she would still be waiting for him as promised. He leaned forward resting his head on the wheel. He just had to remember the strength that had gotten him through graduate school and to the cusp of getting his doctorate. He was a strong, capable man and he had a mission in life. He took a deep breath and slowly backed out of the driveway, knowing if she so much as peeked out the window to see if he was still there, he'd change his mind and beg her to stay. Asterisk. Saying goodbye at the airport was even harder than Kaya had thought it would be. She and May said goodbye to Liz at the car, but they went through security together and were able to sit close. Their gates were right next to each other. I hope you and Sarah have a good time, Kaya said swiping away another tear. I'm sorry I'm not flying home with you. 
I'm a little worried about you. Are you going to be all right? May asked, frowning at her friend. Kaya nodded, looking down at her hands. I will, because I have to be. You know me. I look at the bright side and think positively. I'll be just fine. I think I'll probably spend a week mourning, and then I'll pull myself up by my bootstraps and move on with my life. Just promise me if you meet someone else, you'll be able to really move on with your life. He's made it clear he's ready to move on. Kaya shrugged, refusing to lie to her friend, but knowing she'd wait forever. How could she ever settle for second best? Glenn was the man she was meant to be with. They're calling my flight. May got to her feet and the two women embraced. May whispered, booby bump. In Kaya's ear, but even that didn't make Kaya laugh. I'll see you online, but I'm going to bug you in a couple of months to go to lunch with me. See that you do. My aunt Sally will be in town tomorrow to get my laptop. Thanks for taking it back with you. I know if I take it to New York, I'll be working instead of playing, and I'm going there to play. Kaya nodded. It's no problem. She walked toward the plane, knowing that leaving Idaho was the wrong thing to do, but she had no choice in the matter. Asterisk. Kaya found her friend Jenny at baggage claim, and she gave her a half-hearted smile. Thanks for coming to get me. She didn't want Jenny to realize how upset she was, but she wasn't sure there was a way to hide it. Not with the way she was feeling. No problem. I have today off for a doctor's appointment anyway. Jenny patted her burgeoning belly. I appreciate it though. Kaya kept her face averted, knowing Jenny would be able to tell how sad she was. How was your flight? It was nice. May talked me into flying first class, and though I'll probably never be able to do it again, I will now always lament that I have to have my legs all scrunched up in coach, because I know there's better. Jenny laughed. I've never flown coach, so I don't really get the big deal about flying first. Kaya shook her head at her friend. Only someone born with a silver spoon in her mouth would be able to be so blasé about it. Jenny's eyes widened, and she stared at Kaya. You met someone. Oh, there's my suitcase, Kaya said, ignoring her friend's statement. I need to get something wild like May has. She never loses her luggage. Jenny frowned, grabbing Kaya's arm as she struggled to put her computer bag onto the handle of her big suitcase. He broke your heart, didn't he? Oh, Kaya, I'm so sorry. Kaya continued to fidget with her bags, dashing at a tear that had escaped. She wanted to wait until she was home to cry. Who stood in airports sobbing like a baby? This is everything. I'm ready when you are. Jenny led the way to her car, out of the airport into the heat of the Texas summer. It's 102 today. Welcome home. Kaya sighed. Idaho was beautiful. The temperature was perfect every day. Warm enough to swim, but still cool enough that we needed sweaters in the evenings. Sounds glorious, Jenny said as she unlocked her car. I'm going to get the air conditioner going. It's not like I can help you put anything in anyway. Sounds good. Kaya put her computer bag and suitcase in the back and took a few deep breaths of the stale air in the smog-filled airport parking garage. She had to get herself calm before she got into the car with Jenny. She didn't want to talk about Glenn. She just wanted to get home so she could cry for a week or two. Climbing into the passenger seat, she buckled her seatbelt and turned the vents toward her face to get their maximum effect. Jenny pulled out of her spot and started to mingle with the airport traffic. Tell me about him. And don't deny he exists. I need to know if I should fly to Idaho and beat him up. Kaya laughed, a sound that was still sad somehow, and unrecognizable as her own. His name is Glenn, and he's 6'5 and all muscle. I wouldn't recommend you fly up there to try to beat him up. Jenny frowned. I'll send Tony then. Honestly, he did nothing wrong. 
I saw him, and instantly fell in love. You know I believe there's one perfect man for every woman. Well, he's that perfect man for me. Did you spend your whole vacation chasing the man? Jenny asked as she swerved in and out of traffic. Kaya and Jenny had been roommates in college, and Jenny knew Kaya was capable of all sorts of crazy things. Not at all. I tracked him down at lunch the day after I first saw him, and we had a picnic together. He admitted to me that he had feelings too, but he wasn't in the market. He's got life plans that don't include marriage at this point. So you were smart and avoided him for the rest of the trip? Jenny's voice had taken on a pleading note. She obviously knew Kaya would never take the path of least resistance. It just wasn't in her friend to do so. Nope. We saw each other every day. He told me he wasn't interested in a girlfriend so I kissed him and made a date with him for the next day. Kaya tilted her head back, rolling her neck, to get the kinks out of her neck. He loves me. I love him. But I came home. I told him I'd wait until he's ready, and he told me not to. I put my number in his glove box and said goodbye. That's it. Relationship over. Are you okay? Kaya shrugged. I will be. I'll cry for a few days, and then I'll move on with my life. Do you want to come stay with us for a while? We have spare rooms. No, I really don't. Being alone is a better answer for me right now. I need some time. I'd feel like I had to be cheerful if I was with other people. I really need to cry it out. If you change your mind, let me know. I hate the idea of you being alone right now. What about Bridget? She'd distract you? Kaya glared at her friend. I'd have to kill her. No, I'm going to spend some time alone wallowing. In fact, I'm going to make a wallow schedule. I have exactly one week to wallow, and then I get to move on with my life. I could give you Dr. Lachiel's number. If you were in a new relationship, you might be able to forget about Glenn. Kaya shuddered, hating the thought of another man touching her or kissing her. For her, it was Glenn or no one. Nope. I'm going to do this my way, but thank you. Jenny parked in front of Kaya's building. Do you want me to come in? No, I really just want to be alone. Thank you, though. I'll hit the grocery store today, and then I won't need to worry about going anywhere for a few days. Do you want me to shop with you? I know how much you hate to drive. Kaya opened her door. I love that you care so much, but I need to do this on my own. She got her luggage and waved dragging it around to the back of the building to her first-floor apartment. She turned her air conditioning down and threw herself onto her bed, crying her heart out. She didn't want to be home. She didn't want to be in her apartment. And most importantly, she didn't want to spend the rest of her life without Glenn. Chapter 10 For the first couple of weeks after Kaya left, Glenn threw himself into his work. He did some of the renovations that were still needing to be done after he got home from work every night, so he'd be so tired when he finally went to bed, he wouldn't be able to lay awake thinking about her, but she was always in his dreams, haunting him. At the end of the third week, he decided to go talk to Jacqueline. He didn't put the kind of faith in her everyone else did, but he was willing to try anything. Maybe she could tell him how to get over Kaya. He walked to her house on Thursday at lunchtime, surprised when she was standing on the doorstep, her arms folded over her chest, glaring at him. Get your butt inside, Glenn Johnson. We have some talking to do. Hot tea or milk with your cookies? Tea, I guess. Glenn wasn't sure why she'd been waiting for him, but she'd obviously known he was coming. You sit down and wait for me. I'll only be a minute. Water's already on for tea. Jacqueline disappeared into the kitchen while he sat down in a chair after removing two rabbits from it. He'd never been inside Jacqueline's house before, preferring to believe she was insane like so many others did. 
He looked around, not at all surprised about all the whimsical decorations covering the walls. There was a black and white picture of a policeman in uniform on an end table, and he wanted to pick it up and look at it, but he was afraid Jacqueline would slap his hand away. She came back with a tray, which she set on the table. She gave him a plate full of cookies and a cup of tea. So you finally figured it out, did you? Glenn shook his head. Figured what out? What the rest of us have known since we saw the two of you together for the first time a month ago. You can't live without her. I knew her for two weeks, he protested. She's been gone longer than she was ever here. But, I can't stop thinking about her. I can't stop dreaming about her. I hear her crying in my sleep. He shook his head. You have to tell me how to get over her. Get over her? Have you lost your ever-loving mind? You need to find some way to get her back, you imbecile. Glenn blinked at Jacqueline a few times. I've only heard about how kind and nice you are. Am I in the wrong place? Jacqueline took a sip of her tea, studying Glenn over the top of it. If I told you that you had diabetes, and you would die unless you took insulin, what would you do? I guess I'd take insulin. What an odd question. She really is insane. If I told you that you had pneumonia, and you'd die without an antibiotic, what would you do? Glenn sighed. I'd take the antibiotic. You and Kaya are meant to be together. Neither of you will function well apart. You're two halves of a whole. Now what will you do? I guess I need to figure out how to get her back to Idaho. He took a deep breath, closing his eyes for a moment. She gave me her phone number. I'll call her. He realized then this was why he'd come to her. Not to be told how to get over her, but to be told he needed to get her back. He couldn't let himself make the decision on his own, but if someone else gave him the advice, well, it just felt like it was okay that way. No. No? Hadn't she just said he should get her back in Idaho? You need to fly to Texas and show up on her doorstep with a bouquet of flowers, get down on one knee, and tell her life isn't worth living without her. Glenn shook his head. I don't even have her address? How am I supposed to show up at her door? Aren't you about to get your PhD? Yes, ma'am. Then start thinking, man. One of her closest friends is Liz. Liz worked at the cafe until a short while ago. Liz will have her address, and Kelsey will have Liz's phone number. Go to Kelsey and beg her to give you Liz's phone number. If you tell her why you need it, she will give it to you with no problem. See? Think, and all the world's problems can be solved. Jacqueline took another sip of her tea, watching Glenn's face slowly light up. Now get out of here. You're not welcome back until you put a ring on that girl's finger. Glenn jumped up, opening the door. Thank you, ma'am. Glenn? She's really special, and she's going to make you the happiest man alive. He smiled, feeling as if a huge weight was off his chest. All the obstacles were still there, but they could work their way through them together. He just had one question. How did you know I was coming? The fairies told me, of course. She raised her hand in a shooing motion. Go. Glenn ran all the way from Jacqueline's little house to the cafe, out of breath when he got there. He slipped onto a stool, and Kelsey took one look at him, filling a glass with ice water and taking it to him. You want lunch? Or just water? Glenn took a deep breath. I want Liz's phone number. Kelsey frowned. Liz is a married woman. I know she is, but she'll have Kaya's address. She's the only person I know who will. Kelsey put her hands on her hips. You were daft enough to let that woman get away without at least getting her address? He sighed. I just heard all about it from Jacqueline. Please, Kelsey, give me Liz's phone number. No. I won't. She walked to the cash register, picked up a pen and tablet, looked at her phone, and jotted something down. 
She walked back to him and gave him the paper. There. You don't deserve it, but Kaya deserves to be happy. Now go get her. Glenn glanced down at the piece of paper and saw Kaya's name and address. He jumped off his stool and hurried to the door. Thanks, Kelsey. Don't you dare come back here without her. Kelsey called after him. Glenn ignored her, running back to the stable. He caught his boss in the stall with one of the horses. How's she doing? Wyatt shrugged, stroking the mare's nose. She's fine. She hurt her leg a bit, but Jake said she'll be good as new in a week or two. I need some time off, Glenn blurted out. He knew better than to just demand what he wanted, but he seemed to have lost every brain cell he'd ever had. Wyatt looked at him. Finally getting off your bum and going after that girl, huh? Glenn had no idea Wyatt even realized Kaya existed. He wasn't the type to talk to his employees about their love lives or anything else for that matter. Yeah. I need to bring her home. Wyatt nodded. I'll get someone in here for you tomorrow and cover for you myself Saturday and Sunday. Mondays and Tuesdays are slow, and then it's your days off. Be back by Friday. Thank you. I'll fly out right away. Good. You're no use to me moping around about that woman. Wyatt turned his back on him and went back to work. Glenn couldn't believe his luck, but he wasn't about to stand there long enough for Wyatt to change his mind. Belinda sure has been good for you, he called over his shoulder as he ran out. He went home and threw enough clothes for a week into a bag. Then he pulled out his phone and started searching for a flight. The sooner he got to Kaya, the sooner she'd be in Idaho where she belonged. Asterisk. Kaya sank deeper into the water in the hot tub. One of her favorite things about her apartment complex was there was a pool and hot tub just outside her apartment, and the laundromat was just behind the pool. Today, she really needed the water. She'd started a new book after her wallowing period was over, but it was slow going. As much as she tried to push herself to finish it, she just couldn't make her normal daily word counts happen. When she finished in the hot tub, she walked over and dove cleanly into the pool, blatantly ignoring the no-diving signs posted around. She knew how to dive shallowly, and that was what mattered, right? She finished her swim and grabbed her towel, slipping her feet into flip-flops, to walk back to her apartment. She was planning on writing as soon as she was showered and in her pajamas. As she walked, she noticed something very large on her doorstep, and she squinted a bit to see what it was. She took her contacts out to swim, but she really couldn't see very well without them or her glasses, which she wore primarily for backup. She could make it to the pool and back, but that was about it. When she was close, she realized the object was really a person. A person with a huge bouquet of flowers. Glenn? It couldn't be him. Glenn jumped to his feet, shoving the flowers at her. Kaya buried her face in them, inhaling deeply. What are you doing here? I didn't give you my address. She unlocked her door and led them into the blissful cool of her apartment. I got it from Kelsey. I needed to talk to you. Wouldn't that have been easier by phone, she asked, wrinkling her nose at him. Looking down at herself, she blushed, realizing he was in jeans, and she was standing in front of him in just a bathing suit. Do you mind if I shower the chlorine off me and get dressed? I will feel a lot more comfortable. Glenn frowned. You don't have to. He didn't want to put off their discussion for a minute longer than absolutely necessary. I know I don't. Do you mind if I do? She simply couldn't wrap her mind around the fact that he was there, and she needed a minute to think. Sure. Go ahead. Glenn sank down onto her couch and reached for the nearest book, which was one of hers. Kaya rushed into the bathroom, grabbing clothes to take with her. She showered quickly, not wanting to leave him alone for too long. Once she was dressed and had dried her hair, she walked back into the living room, taking a seat on the couch beside him. Sorry about that. 
I hate sitting around with chlorine on my skin. He put the book down and turned to her, taking her hand in his. I know you weren't expecting to see me. She laughed softly. That's putting it mildly. You made it really clear you had no time in your life for me, so I came home where I belong. She didn't though. She didn't belong in Texas anymore. She belonged wherever he was, and that meant Idaho. He sighed. I made a mistake. I, I thought I could live without you. That I could go on and do everything I planned to do. I can't though. You're the other half of me. I feel like I've had an arm cut off as I try to go on with my life. I've been working myself half into a coma and falling into bed dead tired, so I wouldn't lie awake thinking about you, and then I dream about you. I can hear you crying when I close my eyes. Kaya frowned. So you're here out of guilt? No, I'm here out of love. Out of absolute necessity. I can't go on without you. Come back to Idaho with me. There's nothing I want more than to be with you, but, are you sure? He nodded emphatically. I have until Friday off work, but then I have to get back. She nodded slowly. I see. Well, are you going to marry me or not? Glenn asked, slightly perturbed that she wasn't acting more excited. You didn't ask me to marry you. You asked me to come back to Idaho with you. She felt the joy bubble up inside her, but she still wasn't going to accept that pathetic proposal. She'd written some beautiful proposals, and what he'd just said didn't even qualify for ridiculous. He sighed. You're going to make me do it right, aren't you? She frowned at him. I'm a romance writer. I love all things romance. You can't tell me you think it's okay for you to propose like that, cause it's not. I need a real proposal. One that seems like you like me. He frowned. Let's go for a walk then. She nodded, getting to her feet. I have some bottled water in the fridge. He looked around her tiny apartment, amazed that anyone could live in such a small space. How many square feet is this place? She wrinkled her nose, pulling water from the fridge and walking to him, handing him one. It's just under 600 square feet. She looked around her, thinking about how small it was compared to his house. Wow. It's tiny. She shrugged. I don't need more. I'm just one person. I can understand that. Okay, let's walk. He waited until she'd opened the door before taking her hand. Is there a park near here we can walk to? She shook her head. Not really. There's one we can drive to. It's about a ten-minute drive if we don't hit traffic. Okay, let's go there. This is not the backdrop for the perfect proposal you're looking for. She led him to her car. How'd you get here? I rented a car at the airport. Do you want to drive? She'd sure let him if he was up for it. No. I'm not used to driving in all this traffic. She nodded. I hate it, but I can do it when I have to. She got behind the wheel and waited for him to get in. Why didn't you call me and tell me you were coming? I could have picked you up. Jacqueline told me not to. Kaya laughed, and it felt good to her. It had been a while since she'd really felt like laughing. So you got advice from the fairies, did you? I didn't know who else to turn to. Glenn looked over at her, watching her as she navigated the busy streets. I've really missed you. She stared straight ahead, afraid to take her eyes off the road for even a second. I've missed you too. It's strange how much you came to mean to me in just a short time. She pulled into the parking lot of the huge park where she did her walking most mornings. There are walking trails. Are there benches? he asked. She nodded. There are even some off the beaten path deep within the wooded areas. Take me to one of those. He grabbed his bottle of water and entangled his fingers with hers. As they walked, he talked. 
I have it figured out, I think. It's not going to hurt me to have you there. Sure, I'll have to still work hard to get my business up and running, but I'll have free time, and there's no one I'd rather spend it with. Are you sure I won't get in your way? Because that's the last thing I want to happen. Kaya knew she wouldn't be able to bear it if they decided to marry, and then he backed out. No, it would be better if he just never asked than that. I'm sure. With you beside me, I'm sure I'll get more done than I would without you there. He looked around him as they walked the path. There, in the middle of the city, they'd tried to simulate the area he had in the country. Why not just live in the country? This is where I walk most mornings. This doesn't feel safe to me. Don't do that anymore. She shrugged. I do what I can. I can walk around my apartment complex, but early morning, it doesn't feel a lot safer. It's just the big city thing, I think. She nodded her head off to the left. One of the benches I was telling you about is back here. He followed her to the bench in the middle of the wooded area. It was cement, and seemed out of place to him, but he said nothing. You have to sit. You've gotten bossy in the weeks we've been apart. She realized then they hadn't kissed since he'd been there. She needed that kiss to make sure her memory wasn't faulty, so instead of sitting, she leaned toward him, grabbed the front of his shirt, and kissed him. Glenn didn't complain, wrapping his arms around her and deepening the kiss. When he lifted his head, her lips were swollen, and her eyes were half-closed. Now will you sit, Kaya? Please? She sat down on the bench, thankful to be off her wobbly legs. He made her feel so much more than she'd ever dreamed she would. I'm sitting. Glenn got down onto one knee, and even though she'd suspected he would, the tears started flowing. He took her hand in one of his and said, Kaya, I've never in my life felt for anyone like I feel for you. You complete me in a way I thought was just in storybooks. You make me laugh, smile, and enjoy life. Please marry me and complete me? Kaya nodded, biting her lip as the tears coursed down her cheeks. Yes, I will marry you. He moved on to the bench beside her, gathering her to him and kissing her again. You've made me the happiest man alive. His hand stroked over her back. Will you marry me tomorrow? She blinked. There's a three-day waiting period in Texas. He groaned. Then we can go somewhere there's not a waiting period. How long would it take to drive to another state? She frowned. Oklahoma's about an hour and a half, and they don't have a waiting period. I researched it for a book recently. Would you be willing to go tomorrow then? Overwhelmed by the thought, she took a moment. Yes, let's do it tomorrow. She really didn't want to wait. Then she shook her head. No. I want to get married at the ranch. I want Kelsey, Jacqueline, and Donna there. I have people I love in Idaho, and you have no one in Texas. He frowned. But then we have to wait longer to get married. She sighed. I know. Why don't we get married this weekend, and then we'll have a reception on the ranch? We'll get the best of both worlds. He pressed a kiss to her lips. That sounds perfect. And you can plan exactly what you want for the reception. Kaya rested her head on his shoulder, sighing. I think we should start driving to Oklahoma right now. All the courthouses would be closed, but they could get a hotel with separate rooms and marry first thing in the morning. It would be perfect. Sounds good to me. He jumped to his feet, grabbed her hand, and started tugging her back in the direction of the car. Can't be soon enough for me. She laughed, hurrying to keep up. I can't imagine anything I want more than to spend the rest of my life with you, Glenn. I'm so glad you came to get me. He grinned. Me too. She followed him contentedly. If only his name was Matt, the world would be a perfect place. If you enjoyed this audiobook, please like and subscribe and ring the bell.